In our complex global economy, GS1 supply chain standards help everyone around the world work together. GS1 is the most widely used global standard for barcodes and labels in your supply chain. Nice Label Designer gives you the tools you need to create compliant GS1 labels you can use wherever you do business. In this video, you'll learn about the GS1 standard, how to configure GS1 functions, and how to create GS1 barcodes and GS1 compliant labels. You can find complete GS1 sample labels in your Nice Label sample files. We also recommend you watch how to design simple labels to get more familiar with basic label design. Let's say you need a GS1 logistics label for your pallets of the same products. Pallet labels for perishable goods require three GS1-128 barcodes, each with different data. Follow specific GS1 guidelines carefully to guide your label template design. Your GS1 label template includes three sections. The top section can include text and graphics and usually contains information like logos and addresses. The middle section contains human readable information about your palette. This same information is encoded in your barcodes. The bottom section contains your GS1-128 barcodes encoded with your palette information. Note that only the bottom section is mandatory for GS1-128. GS1 rules should also guide you as you add your label template data sources. Make sure your GS1 barcodes are configured correctly to comply with specific GS1 compatibility requirements. Your GS1 labels can be any size. Consider the amount of data you need, your barcode height, and the surfaces of pallets and packages when you choose your label template size. Common sizes include A6 or 4x6 inches, and A5 or 6x8 inches. Today your palette labels will be size A5. Let's start creating your label template in Nice Label Designer. Click Create a New Label to run the new label setup wizard. Select your printer, page size settings, and layout. For a size A5 label, set your label dimensions in millimeters to 148 by 210. When you're done, click Finish to start working on your new label template. Create two line objects to separate your three sections. Include your company logo in the top section. Your middle section contains different human-readable palette and product information. Create fixed text objects for all the data sources you're including on your label template. Align your text objects with the Align tool in Arial Size 12 to comply with GS1 size requirements. Create variables for your data to connect to dynamic data objects in your middle section and to your barcodes in the bottom section. When you create your variables, adjust properties, input rules, and character and length limits to make sure all your variables are GS1 compliant. Add your Serial Shipping Container Code, SSCC, a unique GS1 identifier for each logistical unit. GS1 compliant SSCCs are 18 digits, including the final check digit. Go to Variable Properties, Input Rules, and limit your numeric character length to 17. Your 18th check digit is added automatically to your variable data on your barcode. Click Fixed Length, which means your variable must contain exactly 17 characters. Add your GTIN, Global Trade Item Number, registered with GS1. All the products you include in your logistical units need the same GTIN. GTINs are 14 digits including the final check digit. Go to Variable Properties, Input Rules, Choose Numeric Characters and set character length to 13. Your check digit is not included. Add a variable for your box count. And limit your numeric character length to 8. 
Add a batch slash lot number variable. It can contain up to 20 characters. Add a best before date variable. Change the data type to date. And choose your date format. Your last variable is product name, not defined by GS1. Limit the length to 20 characters for your labels. When you're done creating variables, add your three barcodes. GS1128 barcodes encode multiple GS1 application identifiers with unique code prefixes. Common application identifiers include your GTIN, best before dates, production dates, and lot numbers. Application identifiers also dictate formats like data types and character limits. Consult GS1 guidelines to learn more about using specific application identifiers. Your first barcode includes two application identifiers, your GTIN and box count. Add a new barcode object to your label template. In Barcode Properties, select Barcode Type GS1128. Adding a GS1128 barcode generates a GS1128 function. The red warning shows you need to finish setting up your function. Right-click to edit your function. Under Application Identifiers, click Edit Function Definition. In the GS1128 wizard, add your GTIN application identifier from the drop-down menu. Your values can be static or dynamic. Click Data Source to connect your GTIN variable. Choose Auto Generate Check Digit to automatically create a 14th check digit from your data. If your data already includes a check digit, click Include Check Digit. For your box count, add Application Identifier 37, Count of Trade Items or Trade Item Pieces, from the drop down menu. Click Data Source and connect your box count variable. Your GS1128 function is set up. Click OK to complete your first barcode. Your second barcode includes two application identifiers, your best before date and your batch number. Add a new barcode object to your label template. In Barcode Properties, change the type to GS1128. In Barcode Properties, you can also go to the Source tab and click Edit Function Definition to add your application identifiers. In the GS1128 wizard, add Application Identifier 15 from the drop-down menu for your best before date. Click Data Source and connect your best before variable. Note that even though your best before variable is day, month, year for your human readable text, the GS1 wizard automatically applies the format year, month, day to comply with GS1 128 standards in your barcode. Add application identifier 10, batch or lot number, from the drop down menu. Click data source and connect your lot variable. Click OK to complete your second barcode. Your third barcode only includes application identifier 00, your SSCC. Add your third barcode and set up your GS1128 function. Choose Auto Generate Check Digit to automatically create an 18th check digit from your data. Click OK to complete your third barcode. Now adjust the X dimensions and height of your barcodes to follow GS1 guidelines. Go to Barcode Properties Barcode and set X dimensions to 0.5 mm and your barcode height to 32 mm. Reposition your human readable text and change the font to Arial Size 12 to comply with GS1 size requirements. Center align your barcode and human readable text on your label template and repeat this process for all your barcodes and human readable barcode text. The bottom section of your label template is complete. With your variables and GS1128 functions now set up, you can use dynamic text objects to display your data as human-readable text in your middle building block to complete your label template. 
for your batch number, box count, and best before date, add new text objects connected to their corresponding variables. Your SSCC must include an 18th check digit. If your data already includes a check digit and you chose include check digit when you set up your variable, you can connect your variable as is. Because you chose to auto-generate a check digit from your data, you can use a subset function to complete your SSCC value from your GS1128 function and display it in your text box. Add a new subset function. For input data, select your SSCC GS1128 function from your third barcode. To display correctly, you need to exclude the first four characters in your GS1128 function, which represent parentheses and the application identifier code. Set your offset to 4 and length to 18 to use the full 18-digit SSCC with your automatically generated check digit. Click OK to finish your subset function and connect it to a text box in your middle section. Repeat this process to create a subset function to display your full GTIN with a check digit in a text box on your label template. For your font, choose Arial Size 18 to comply with GS1 size requirements and align your text objects. That's it, your label template is complete. Type in your product information in a print preview to see your GS1128 functions in action. You're ready to print your GS1 compliant labels. Thanks for watching. Check out our other videos to learn how NiceLabel helps you do more, faster, with less.